And I know at this point uh, we have a whole bunch of folks that, um, you know, so you're staying home with this COVID, sometimes it, it, it gets into your head. People, I see people, uh, I was talking to a, a friend of mine a couple of days. He's an IT professional as well. And he's telling me how um, his wife is fighting depression. His wife is also into IT. So, um, and they cannot figure out what, what exactly is going on with her, but she's just depressed. And with this COVID-19 thing, thing going on, I see you have to motivate yourself. That's why I got the motivational video in there, which I listen to things like that as, as well a lot. And, and they help out a lot for me. And also I'm a Christian. I listen to the word of God and you got to do something to motivate yourself. Now, what I, what I see is that sometimes when people get depressed, then they uh, sometimes they, they just give up. They, you see, somebody will finish the course and will not want to apply for a job or just will just chill and just don't not want to proceed. So uh, this is the time that you have to really, really, you know, try to motivate yourself to not give up. It happens. I've seen that several times, right? So we, we have tools that we um, also can, you know, you can also, my wife is a minister, she does, you can see she, um, you can go, that's her website right there, right? Uh, if you look at the bottom, www.kebadoutreach.com. There are some really good videos that will help you out spiritually. If you need to talk to her for spiritual reasons or whatever you want her to pray for you, have a personal prayer for you and everything, she does that. A lot of students call her up from other classes, um, class 25, class 24, and she's always talking to people, you know, and, and trying to counsel them. Even me, she, she does it. When I don't feel good and I would talk to her. We, we encourage each other. She also needs, she sometimes I, I encourage her, but I, I try to be as positive as I can. But you, if you just sit there and don't do anything, the natural trend is that you will feel terrible. By default, the way things are set up is to make you depressed. That's just how life is, is configured. So you definitely have to do something to actually, um, you know, make sure that things are positive in you. Because you get a one morning, you'll be like, uh, just feel like you don't want to get up from bed and you feel terrible and is this life? Why am I struggling? Why are things so hard? Uh, you know, sometimes the why question, to me, the why question is answered by God. You pray to God and say, you know what? The plans that he has for you, they are good plans. It might be tough today, but tomorrow will be different. I kept telling myself that every single day. There were days that were really bad and I would get up in the morning and I'm like, wow, this is, how low can I go? I hit rock bottom. I, can, I cannot go any lower than this except going back up. And I'm planning to get back up and I'll get up and keep going. So this is the time, guys. I usually would talk to you like this at this time because you're inching closer to the end of the course. And you're at the home stretch right now. And don't let anything prevent you from getting that go like from getting your job that is the key right now the focus is i will get that job and nothing will stop me from getting it now there's a question that i always like to ask my admins at this time of the program the question is this are you an admin can you answer the question are you an admin yes i oh, am all right fine so if you're an admin how can you prove it? Prove it. Prove that. What, what, what are you supposed to know as an admin? So then you tell yourself, right? Even sometimes you can be, be uh, just sitting there when you are in your quiet time or just before you go to sleep and you sit there and say, well, for the past five months, you know, I've been in this program. Am I an admin? If I am an admin, what can I do as an admin? Do you have a laundry list of what you can do as an admin? And if you're feeling, if you, you don't feel good, let's say you're sitting there saying, well, you know, I, I, I have all this information. 
and I don't know if I really know this stuff. First thing is that do sit down and do an inventory of what you're supposed to know. What do you know? What do you still have to learn? You have to know something from everything we've learned from the very start, from the beginning, right? Starting from week, I mean, the, the, the month one, the first month information. How much of it did you retain? And I, let me just give you a longer list of it though. So to start at the very start, can you build a note system from scratch without looking at your notes? Right? And that's how it, it comes down to that. To do stuff without looking at your notes. If you still can if you're still looking at your notes now, then you haven't mastered you haven't mastered that, that material. Can you build a nose completely without looking at your notes? Can we all do that, folks? Yeah. Yes. So so good. That's number one. Number two, right? Number two. Can you introduce the nodes to the LAN by assigning static IPs and everything without looking at your notes? Yes. All right. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Now, if there is connectivity issues, let's say the nodes cannot connect to the internet, can you troubleshoot and fix the problem? Some of it. <laughs> well, so at this point, you should be saying yes. And look, everything i think this this really is what that's what you should be telling yourself at this point in the course i must be able to troubleshoot issues like that if i'm an admin i should not have a situation where i cannot troubleshoot and fix a nose no nose network connectivity issues what I said that I, I said that based on if mm -hmm. the, the problem was maybe uh rj 45 problem maybe okay but problem. you should be able to at least identify it yeah sure. right so if your nose cannot connect to the internet now what are we looking for right first of all you start from the very basic is the nose braced right number one well if it's braced is it braced to the right knee you see that so is it braced to the right knee because remember some of your <clears throat> system have multiple knees in them so if your system has multiple NICs, then um, you can, you, if you're bridging to the Ethernet NIC instead of the wireless NIC, then you might have a problem. At this point of the class, you should know, uh, you know how to bridge to your right NIC. So um, now second, or actually third, uh, does it have the right IP address? Right? Can you look at the IP address and, and be able to figure out if that IP address is will work in your LAN or not? Because, for example, you have a LAN that's configured with a class C address, but then you mistakenly, and you look at your nodes and your nodes have a, a class A address in it. Can you really figure out the IP addressing stuff? Because if, you're, if your nodes has, has a class A address, it will never work in your LAN, right? because you have a class C address and even if let's say your nose has a class C address and your line has a class C address now do you understand how the address is supposed to be configured to work in your land like can you can you actually identify the network address portion make sure that that network address portion is consistent that's from your nose is consistent it's consistent with that of your land because if the network address portions are not consistent then they will not talk to each other for example you have, let's say your nose has 192.168.2.3 as the network address, and that's standard class C. And then your um, network has 192.168.1 as a network address. Can those two systems talk to each other? No, they can. So you have to be able to identify IP configuration related issues and resolve them right I, i'm not saying that you should at this point of the course you should know everything but i'm just telling you what, the way to think now if you're sitting there saying okay well you know then that's my problem then you start now you go back and revise your ip addressing right so again now remember i'm starting from the very beginning asking you the questions from the very beginning at some point i'll be writing down the stuff for you i'll be giving you bullet points and in like boxes where you check if you can handle this and if you cannot handle it you go back and revise so again number one can you install a nose 
Number two, can you introduce a NOS to the network? Number three, can you troubleshoot NOS network related issues? Number four, if you are a systems admin, what, what can you do as a systems admin? What should you be able to do as a systems admin? Can you build a Windows server from scratch without looking at your notes? Can we guys? Yes. All right. Can you introduce that server to the network by assigning static uh, information? Yes. Yes. All right. Can you, right, can you uh, promote that server from a standard server to a domain controller without looking at your notes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you configure Active Directory and create user accounts in Active Directory without looking at your notes? Yes. What's the command used to promote a standard server to active to to uh, to a domain controller? DC promo. DC, DC promo. DC, DC promo. promo. What does DC promo stand for? Uh, domain, domain controller. Control. Domain controller promote. promote. Right. Okay. Now, can you configure a nose to join the domain without looking at your notes? Yes. Somehow. Yes. yes. Now, if you were to configure a NOS to join a domain, what do you do to just explain it? At Trinitech, how do you configure a NOS to join the domain at Trinitech? This is an interview question. First, uh, and so let me ask you some questions about uh, DNS that you're supposed to know. Now, what's the port? What's the port of DNS? Port, three. port what? 5-3. Port 53. Perfect. Now, uh, so DNS... Uh, now, what what um, record in DNS is responsible for reverse lookup? PTR record. The PTR record. What record is responsible for creating aliases of host names? C name. C name. The C name record. And what's the A record? What does it do? A record. It maps host name to IP address, and it also um, it also stores. Um, Okay. I forgot. You're mixing up. Yeah, the first part that you said, it a record is what a host name to IP address mapping. But what does it do? It performs a forward Re name resolution. A forward right? name resolution. It does yeah. forward name resolution. If you look at the brain teaser that I did for class twenty seven, I think for last week we had something like that in there. Um, all right, very important. Um, when these are the things that you get for DNS, and again. Uh, what's a fully qualified domain name, folks? What is it? It's local uh, uh, host name plus uh, domain do, domain name. The host name plus the domain name is a uh, fully qualified domain name. And um, now, what is a three-way handshake? A three a three-way handshake. Um, it and just so you know, Kenny, you're not the only one to be answering, so other folks can also answer. <laughs> so you, you don't, it's, it's not like I'm, I'm talking to you directly, okay. right? The three-way three handshake hands is a The three-way handshake is a process whereby mm -hmm. uh, a, a receiving, uh, a receiving, uh, Okay. Are we allowed to try? The three-way handshake is, is a process where um, a system sends out a signal to uh, another system. Yeah, I know. I, I just read that myself. <laughs> yep, yep. Go ahead. And, Go ahead. And, mm -hmm. the, and, the, and the receiving system acknowledges and sends um, uh, uh, another signal acknowledging that it received the signal from the sending system. And the sending system now sends back the signal, um, acknowledges the signal from the receiving system before transmitting the data. Okay. All right. Well, so that's that's so well. So again, a three-way handshake is a process where the sending system sends a signal, right? Which is called what? It's called a sync signal yeah. to a receiving system. And a receiving system sends what? An acknowledgement yeah. and sync signal, yeah. right? Then right. the sending system now sends an acknowledgement. But b before you even go into that, just know three-way handshake is done. It, it, it takes place. It's a process that occurs prior to TCP sending traffic 
you must say that if you don't make that statement you start saying well it's where the sending system now the guy's like okay i understand but in what process it's a process by which tcp right it is a process by which tcp sends out um it, it's first that of course before tcp sends out traffic or sends information to another system and and we know that the sending system will send a sync signal receiving system sends an acknowledgement and sync signal and then the uh, sending system now will respond with an acknowledgement signal and then if everything checks out then um then the the, the transmission starts right data transmission starts another thing that we need to know right another thing that we need to know for the osi model let's look at um now a switch what layer is associated with with the switch what layer of the osi model is associated with the switch? was that the tree what layer the um was that again yeah, yeah. Uh, network layer yeah. it's, the data it's the data link layer the data link layer is associated with a switch the data link layer is what is associated with a switch data link and um now what layer is associated with ip config transport no no network network sorry. the network layer right network. Things like ping, because IP, IP and its components work in the network layer, right? So anything that's, well, ping, IP config, all of those work in the network layer. Now, what other device, networking device, is associated with the, net, with the network layer? What other networking device is associated with the network layer? A router. A router. The router is also associated with the network layer. Very, very important. Take note of that. Router is also associated with the network layer. Now, how about uh, compression? What layer is associated with compression? Presentation. presentation. The presentation layer is, is associated with compress compression. How about uh, encryption? Presentation. Okay, the presentation. Now, how about um, how about SQL? What layer is associated with SQL, which which is uh, a language that's used to query databases? Session. The session layer, because a session is established, right? A session is established um, at this layer. When you now, every time you you connect your system right and there's a link because once you connect your system you, you you try to connect to any any other system or any other software there's a temporary link that uh you know is created and that link it, it's a session right that's a session that that links the, the link um actually stays there right that link stays there until the session is terminated so uh that happens in the session layer now now let's look at um now how about um how about beats what what layers associated with beats it's physical the physical yeah, layer is associated with beats right because that's when uh that's when data actually flows into the cable and and it's in electrical pulses now when data is flowing inside uh, of that cable now the bandwidth of data inside of a of a cat cable is measured what's the unit of measurement what's the unit of measurement of data flowing inside a cat cable megabits gigabits right remember now what's the difference between gigabits and gigabytes uh, the gigabyte it has the uppercase G <laughs> and the gigabit <laughs> the lower case. Okay, it has the uppercase G and the lowercase B, right? But what's what's the give me some some um like statistical uh, difference? I mean eight, eight bits eight is equal to one byte. Eight equal to one byte, right? Eight gigs equal to one byte. And you know beats used to measure data flow inside of cable when it's in electrical uh when with with uh, when the form is electricity but bytes 
right is used to measure the size of data right the size of data and the bandwidth of data when it's flowing within the network right inside the network if you move something from your let's say your thumb drive if you're transferring data from your thumb drive into your computer it is being transferred in megabytes not megabits if you're gonna if you're gonna check the size of a file or a folder it will be displayed in bytes right gigabytes or megabytes but again if you are measuring the flow of data uh, through a cable it is uh, in uh, bits so take note of that all right so um, now again looking at still that part because this this is this is the crux of networking right when when i prep students for interviews for networking this is where i want us to be very very important okay so now let's talk about ports uh so again what is the port number for https 80 443 four, four, three. Four, four, three. what what uh, uh, application what application is associated with port 445 yesterday what application is associated with port 445 Samba. Samba. <laughs> remember, remember yesterday that's right samba is associated with port 445 remember now who can list the different ports for samba what are the samba ports 137 138 139 445 137 138 139 and 445 that is absolutely yeah. right now <laughs> what what protocol what protocol is associated with port 25 smtp smtp and what does smtp stand for Simple mail transfer protocol. Simple, Simple mail transport protocol. Simple mail transport protocol, right? Take note of that. Simple mail transport protocol. Okay, so um, now uh, what is the port number, right? What is the port number for FTP? 21. 21. 21. 21. Port 21, right? 21. Now, what's the port number for SFTP? 21. For 22, the secure side of it. SFTP stands for Secure File Transport Protocol or Secure File Transfer Protocol. The OSI model comes in interviews when, the, when talking about networking. Very, very important. Don't, don't ever leave this out. A lot of students... A lot of students will um, ignore OSI model and when I'm prepping them for the interview and then I say, well, I'll start talking about OSI model and they're like, oh my God, I, I did not study. I did not revise that. And I say, well, including my daughter. I remember the day I was trying to prep her for an interview and she could not remember. And I said, go back and do your revision. Guess what? They had about seven questions that came in the OSI. And if she did not do her revision, she would have been blank. Seven questions came from the OSI model. Seven different questions. And she is the whole thing. So please uh, don't even mess with this. Again, so you are a systems admin because you can do everything we've talked about, right? You, 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 you can do everything we've talked about. And then another thing, you are a systems admin. Why? Because you can build servers from scratch. Now, what kind of servers can you build? Can you build a Linux system, a Unix server, and a Windows server from scratch? Can you build that from scratch without looking at your notes? Server build procedures. Can you introduce Linux and Unix systems to the network without looking at your notes, including changing their host names, uh, configuring uh, TCP, uh, configuring IP, um, DNS, and DHCP? Can yes. you do that without looking at your notes? Yes. Perfect. Now, can you? Can you, um, can you actually uh, troubleshoot issues related? Can you troubleshoot issues related 
to those uh, to to the system not connecting to the internet yes. okay well if you're trying to connect if you're trying to port it into a solar server and you get a connection refuse error what might be the problem your ssh another thing right is as a systems admin you must be able to create user accounts in your system what command you should be able to create an, and manage user accounts so what command would you use to change the components of a user account user user mod. Mod. okay user mod user mod now you're trying to delete a user account and you don't want to delete the home directory what command would you use user self space touch uh uh user dell it's just user dell yeah. it's just that user dell the name it's just user dell now if you want to delete uh, the account and the home directory what else what what command do you use user dell dash r user dell dash r so that's that now um now, if you're trying to um, actually add a user to a primary group, right? What command and option would you use? You're trying to add an existing user. User add dash G, lowercase G. You're trying to add an existing user. User mode dash G. User mode dash G, perfect. You're trying to change the login name or the username of an existing user. What command and option would you use? User more dash L. User more L. Perfect. Perfect. All right. And then you should be able to configure access security. Right? Must be able to, to configure access security. But before we even talk about access security, now, uh, what what file is responsible for managing user profile in linux the password it's a password no dash underscore yeah. profile dash underscore profile dash underscore is it dash underscore profile no dot bash underscore profile dot bash. bash underscore profile right dot bash underscore profile dot bash underscore profile okay and what file is responsible for managing site profile in Solaris? The Solaris, it's EC, um, it's a profile. It's a profile. It's a profile. Okay. So you're trying to delete a directory in Linux, but you don't want it to be interactive. What command would you use to delete? Use the dash F or RM dash RF rm dash rf right rm dash r the r would delete the directory but f would force it so that it the process doesn't become interactive right okay now you're trying to interrupt a linux system to force it to single user mode First what will you do in the boot you interrupt the, the boot up process for for sent for like Linux six. You use the you, you press any key then A. The but for uh, Linux eight, you press the E the E key. Uh, okay, well I'm talking. Okay, let's let's start with center six. That with Linux with Red Hat Enterprise Linux six though. Interrupt the process mm -hmm. of the grub. Yes. And you type you type in the command. Um, R W in it being bash to force it to single user mode. Yes, R W being bash to force it to single user mode. Okay. R W is that it? R W in need equal to being bash, right? Yes. Okay, to force it to single user mode and while in single user mode, then you can now go um you know and do whatever thing you want to do. All right, so now what what is the difference between the ETC password file and the ETC shadow file? This password is used to uh, store accounts. Why shadow used to store password? Is it used to store accounts? Is that it? it it's the account components. Account components. Account, user account components stored in ETC what? What file? ETC password. ETC password. password. How about ETC shadow? 
that is used to store uh, the user password. 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 Okay, it's used to store, store user password. No, password, password, component. password, component, password component, right? Component. User password components. So um, now you want to um, you're creating an account, and you want to prevent that the the, the user you want to prevent that account from logging into the system directly from the console. What will you include in your statement in your account your command to prevent that user from logging in? No, no login. No login. No login. No login. I don't understand. If I was a recruiter, I'd say, well, that doesn't make sense to me. Be, be, be more explicit. Oh. So you run the command that the um, dash D option, you include the no login. Dash what exactly. option? The when dash you're referring D. The directory, it, it's not dash D. It's not that D. Let's try again. When you're referring, the, that, mm -hmm. you're referring the, the home directory, you do okay, directly it's, to it's the... It's not the home directory. I think you should dash use S. Dash is dash S is the shell. So shell. okay, it's dash yeah. S. So after dash S, what do you what do you put in there? No logging. That will not work. It will be uh so it will be dash S as being no login. So that's that. And if you want let me bring it way up so everybody can see that. Just to confirm, Prof, this is just for Linux, right? With this one, yes. And remember, this is uh, this is a Linux thing, and it doesn't work in Solaris, unfortunately. Okay, we're talking about user management, security management, right here, and uh, we're answering questions about those. Uh, now, who can explain? Um, now, let's just say you're trying to create files. Maybe you'll create a directory. Um, for every single user in your LAN and you want to prevent right you want to prevent people from deleting stuff that don't belong to the, to other to them but Keep still the grant full access to everybody else sure, no that's not it sticky bit. sticky bit sticky bit is it right sticky bit now, what permission will you set for sticky bit? What seven, permission? Seven, seven. Seven, That's seven, right. Seven, seven. It will be what? Show mode. Show mode. One seven seven seven. Show mode one seven 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 is the option. Show mode one seven seven seven. So, um, and and this right here. Is the sticky bit? That's the sticky bit. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the sticky bit octal number. Now, who can give me the resulting um, permission attribute? Now, let's say you were to long list the directory, right? What resulting attribute permission attribute will you get for for something like this? You get a you get an S. Of the S at the end of the no. Well, no. It will be RWX, RWX, RWT. So it will be what? Read, write, what? Execute. execute mm -hmm. Read, write, <laughs> execute, and what? Read, write, what? And T. S. T. 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 Right? T. So, so this is it. Seven, seven, seven. And that's the one. And and the T right there is sticky bit permission attribute. So that's the sticky bit permission attribute right there. See that? Now remember now what are the cousins of sticky bit what are the cousins of sticky bit set uid and set gid set uid and set gid but sticky bit comes in more interviews than all of those that's why i the last the last um you know the last interview, not the last one, actually, actually we've, we've had about three different interviews in the past couple of months with Sticky Bit in, in the interview, about three of them.
yeah about three of them they asked the concept of, concept of sticky bit okay <clears throat> so now what determines what determines right yes. the, the the default permission of a file and directory in uh, linux and you yes. the word umass number UMass. the yes. umask value right the umass value and what's the default umass value what is the default umass value Zero two two. Zero two two. Right? Zero two two. And how is the default permission of a file determined using this UMass value? Six six six. All right, so we get six six six, which what is the maximum value is the maximum UMass value for a file? Minus what? Zero two two. Minus, minus zero two two to give us what? Six four four. Four six four four, which translates to. Read what? Read, read write, 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 read, write, read, read, which is the default permission of a, a file. You see that? Don't forget your UMass values. This will come in interviews, you must value. Okay, so you've been tasked, you have been tasked to assign a right permission to a user for your file, for your file, right? For example, let's say your, bo your boss says, okay, we have a file called rules. And this file has a standard permission, read, write, read, read. And so your boss says, well, I want you, I want you to grant uh, Josh, um, and Josh belongs to the group other, and let's just say this file, right, let's say this file is owned by student of the group staff and your boss wants you to grant uh, so your boss wants you to grant read and write permission to Josh to this file now how will you proceed with this use ACL ACL is the answer. Now, how would you give me the command? Set file ACL. All right. Space dash um, M, which is the uh, giving our uh, um, permission as the owner. Mm -hmm. Space U. Mm -hmm. Colon. Josh. Uh, uh huh. Is it's it? Not a student. Wait, what, what are we giving? Student, right? <laughs> it's a George. Okay, Josh. Mm -hmm. Then call on read and write. And read and write dash. Mm -hmm. Call on. Comma. You sure? Yeah, com comma comma dash M. Comma dash mm -hmm. M. Mm -hmm. Then the file. No. Oh. Read write dash. Colon read write dash and then the file which is um what's the file again did we uh, rules? That's it, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Come on, Derek. Come on, Seth. Yes, yeah, sir. But, but typically, when learning for an interview, you just have to know the command, or you have to know the whole thing. <laughs> well, you better know <laughs> the command because now, look. If I'm you're if sure. you're prepping for, uh, <clears throat> if you if you it, it's a mid level interview, for mid level interviews, they go this far, right? And sometimes mid level interviews they don't go this far. Sometimes they will just ask you a question 
just to see if you understand ACL and the answer will just be I will use ACL but um, we always be prepared right for for jobs that will pay you a lot of money be prepared to um, to give commands like this right be very very prepared to do that and if you noticed uh, in this situation um, what what category right what category did Josh fall under in this situation when it comes to permission attributes what category uh, right here world. so he's in the world right or others he's in the world or others, others. And and you can so you see that you know you've been you've granted him that permission, but other folks will not have read and write access. Everybody else will still get this permission right here. Right? So everybody else, they all get read only. George, except the owner, student has read write because student owns it. But George and um Everybody, well, everybody else except George has to still have read-only permission for this, um, for this file. All right, very, very important. We know this. I can throw you some curves, and it's not just the things that you see coming, but sometimes it's the things that you didn't see coming that hit you out of nowhere, that set you back in such a way that it seems like you can't get over. And you've reached your limit and your bandwidth is full and you already said i can't take another thing and then out of nowhere here comes something you didn't see coming and you're in it and in your homes somewhere in your heart these words are echoing am i going to make it when you get into a tight spot and everything goes against you until it seems that you cannot hold on for a minute longer never give up then for that is just the place and time that the tide will turn. There are times when your energy feels so depleted that you want to give up that it looks just totally impossible. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, don't give up then. That's when you've got to fall forward, when life is kicking dirt in your face. Don't give up then. That's when most people turn back. As long as you're alive, there is hope. You're still alive. You're still here. It's never too late. And it's never too dark. And we can always turn things around. There's going to be bad days. There's going to be dark days. But you got to embrace it because that pain is what makes you stronger. Pain is the high cost of growth. If you want to grow up, you want to be mature, there is no way to do it without pain. You can't grow up on easy street. And the very thing that discourages you is the very thing that develops you. No one's coming to save you. No one's coming to save you. The only person that's gonna make a drastic change in your life, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, the only person that is going to dig you out of your hole is who? You, you have to do it for you. You've got to become courageous to stand up within yourself, to face it and step forward. We all get a taste of that victim mentality, the why me? You can become the victim of the situation or the victor of the situation. You need to be the master of your emotions, not let them affect you. You are the dictator. You are the captain of your boat, whether you let things affect you in a negative way or a positive way. I don't lose. I only win or learn. In life, there's only winning or learning. All your problems become gifts once you learn from them. And some of you have allowed adversity to make you stop. And I'm telling you right now, don't give up. I'm telling you right now, don't give in. Get through it. Execute, execute, execute. In the midst of adversity, execute. You're going to work through this. You're going to get up. You're going to get dressed. You're going to get out. And you're going to do what you've been called to do. You're going to be what you called to be. And you're going to prove that everybody that tried to break you, everybody that tried to kill your dream, you're going to prove all of them wrong. And if you can work through your pain, I'm guaranteeing you, on the other side is a reward. Pain is not permanent. Pain is temporary.